and get the show on the road. Right, start with Bitcoin. Let's give it a rundown from the daily since it's been a few weeks. So <clears throat> we have an overlapped Elliott wave count here, always looking for um, this being some sort of wave four. We had the one, two you can see here. Let's just get in there, see every, that everything still, uh, colors are still right. Okay, red is fine. So we had the one down, two up, we were looking at this being a three and then a four ending here and then we went a bit lower here correctively and then we had the spike up now you would remember <clears throat> all the way back a few months ago now probably october this was december yeah december around december we were looking for a push up to take this high out, uh, high out let's just zoom in there take this high high um, one second take this high out and potentially this high out coming to here now we've taken three of them out <clears throat> the big question here is is it uh, over or does BTC have uh, any more room left to go higher we'll start off with the wave count of things let's just try and pop in uh, a mono wave chart there if we were looking at this as a one two three and four there's some things that are for it and some things that are against it straight out the bat you know that the wave three here was not an extended wave so if we took the length of wave one projected it from wave two you can see that it was not a one uh let's just go standard it was not a 1.618 extension something looks a bit off here hold on why is this doing this hold on hold on hold on let's just go here can we reset this levels on log based there that's better right it was a 1.236 extension so not ideal for a wave uh, three also not ideal for a any kind of C wave we'd either want to see a one one is to one extension or 1.618 extension which we fell short of the other thing we have to worry about here is time taken so if we took the length of uh, wave three either from any one of these two here let's just go here the time wave three took let's just go from here to here we don't want the wave four to go you can see it's pushing the boundaries of uh three times the amount at the moment i'm just going to try and move this one over so this puts it around march 6th would make wave four three times the <clears throat> length of wave three in terms of time so still a little bit to go in terms of that it is actually quite big at the moment for a wave four so not really liking that so let's see how this one works out the other thing against this is if this is um ending a wave four then we had this as an a this as a b and then the c would have to be five waves because c in the flat is uh, five waves so then we have a one two we have a three four and then five now if this is a completed five it means that we would need this current move down to break this low in less time than the move up from four to five to to form and you can see it meandered, meandered quite a bit at the top before it uh, actually started to move so I'm, I'm doubting whether the only time this sort of thing happens is when you have an ending diagonal so if we put the 2-4 trend line which we did in here so from wave 2 to through to wave 4 you get a breach of the 2-4 trend line here and the only time though that really happens without it actually being the end of a wave 5 is when you have price action that's uh, that becomes an ending diagonal right so we've breached the 2-4 trend line but we haven't broken the low of wave four yet because if we had broken the wave uh, the low of wave four it would be um break in structure right you can see that this would be the a move the retracement and the push up so we need to break there and we haven't done that 
quite yet. Let me try and drop down one or two more levels on the mono waves just to see if we can get a better um, read on the waves here. <clears throat> right. So wave one here at the bottom. Wave two all the way down here. Wave three is, I think it was double. Let's just put that fob in uh, in there two times, right? Or we could go even one up here, right? Wave three was twice the length of wave one. So ideally we'd expect wave five to be a hundred percent extension of wave one so let's try and get that to be as accurate as possible before we do anything there magnet tool on that was the top there and the bottom here is where nope not quite a hundred percent right which makes me wonder <clears throat> even though and we'll take a look at it even though the indices have been um, looking to go lower whether or not BTC actually wants to push higher and probably end up like a three drive uh, pattern here where we do that we come down and then finally do that right now you can remember wave five can't be a double extension so as soon as we get i think up here somewhere wave five would be invalid so this is something to watch whether the wave four actually ends here around uh it'll actually have to be somewhere here we don't want it to go too far past the um 5th of march so i'm wondering whether we do get one more push up or not and obviously the invalidation for that would be breaking below um, what's up RB breaking below the wave uh, 4 let's try and step it down a few more levels if we can to a weekly wave count and let's see what that looks like All right so wave 3 could have possibly ended here wave 4 here wave 2 was a bit longer <laughs> And this is not doing not doing much here to help us in terms of a wave five ending. Let's just take this to this. Even if it ended somewhere here, you can see that this has to break break the low by tomorrow. This has to break the low of wave five, wave four by tomorrow for us to confirm that the bigger wave four is most likely complete and then that this pivot here at the top was a wave five make sense right we can't have double extensions on the waves up so if we took the length of wave one like we did uh, just now where this was the length of wave one projected from wave two wave three was just over a double extension so wave five would have to be about a hundred percent extension and you can see it's just about there if not tapped it almost perfectly there but we're just not getting the breakdown that we that we want so by tomorrow some things have to happen and <clears throat> let's switch over to a daily draw on on a high time frame just to see what we uh can get out of this so if the wave five actually ended off here instead of here so we push it one over into the high mid on the 21st of February, ending a wave four. Then it gives us a bit more time for this move down to break here. And if this does break here, then we, and, and if it's a wave four, that means we see new lows on BTC and we can plot that out as well. We take the length of, <clears throat> wave one to the length of wave three since wave three wasn't extended 
and project it from that wave four and we look for a hundred percent extension it puts us all the way down here six four nine three right COVID lows that's where it puts us all the way back to COVID lows and if that is the case then what we need to do is let's just get rid of this get rid of no don't get rid of that get rid of this what that actually does mean is that in a five wave move you need one extended wave and one wave that subdivides into five clear waves now the extended waves the extended wave does not have to be the subdivided wave but you can have a situation like i've said before where the extended wave is the extended wave and the subdivided wave so we don't see any clear clear subdivisions uh, on a little, a little bit of a higher time frame on let's go to monthly there's no clear division um, on wave one or wave three so wave five would have to give us five clear waves to the downside <coughs> if this is a one two three four five the alternate is that this is some sort of W and then all of this is an X wave. If it is, it gives us more leeway with the time time side of it because what we do know is that, uh, let's just go one, a few more steps higher. What we do know is that an X wave just doesn't need to be longer than the preceding ABC before it. So if this was instead an ABC, instead of an X, wrong one, sorry. You can see I'm out of touch. There we go. So instead of a one, two, three, we get an ABC. Puts us about here. And then we already seem to be, is that right? Does that look right? This move is now already, let's just double check that with some old school uh, stuff. So this, projected from here. Yep, okay, so that rules out this being an X wave, right? Because this has already taken more time than this being an ABC down. This rules out this being an X. So the only logical thing we do have left is this being a wave four or a B wave if we project it from here instead of the high because the move here or the low was broken with violence from this point not this point so this would be the most recent and energetic move down from here which means all we needed was a retracement here and we didn't quite get let's have a look didn't quite get the 50 percent on on either of it but all we need for an, uh, a B wave is a minimum of 30%, right? So rules out an X wave. So we're dealing with a B wave or a wave four, and we are calling or looking for lower prices to hit the COVID lows like we've uh, said before. So that's from a wave, wave uh, theory point of view. Let's look at it through the lens of a price action point of view using ICT concepts. <clears throat> in terms of uh, ICT concepts, I'm just going to take this off for now, keep this to the side. We had the, and let's turn off the mono wave for a second. Just give me a second, I just want to make sure that this is recording. Okay, it is. <clears throat> in terms of ICT concepts, we had a consolidation from the lows here. Let's call it this as the original consolidation, right? Body to body, 50% being roughly about here. Price bounces off the 50% and where does it go to next? It starts to seek um, liquidity to the left. And if this went from a market maker sell model to a market maker buy model, the liquidity sought after would be here first, then here and then here right 
we've taken all of that and they've now distributed, you would have seen me mention it at this point, if price has to go higher, it needs to seek willing buyers above market price and those are only found in imbalances or subbies, uh, right? So this being one of them. Sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency, which means there were willing buyers within this imbalance here uh, who were not given an opportunity to buy. When price returns to that, um, they would be given an opportunity to buy. The second one would be, so that's internally distributing. The second one, you sound like the guy from SCBC2 who used to do the physics tuition. Thanks, thanks. I'll take that, I'll take that. Secondly, <clears throat> we need to distribute to any other imbalances. So there was tiny imbalance over here. You can see we distributed up there. And then lastly, within all of this here, there's imbalance above this high, which we've taken, which would have been offered to willing buyers inside here, right? Now the question is, is it done? On a daily time frame, let's get rid of this 2-4 trend line for a second, and I'll get rid of these two for now, and let's get rid of this and this. All right, so clean slate. On a daily time frame, <clears throat> we've taken liquidity below here. So we've cleared this low. I'm going to mark this off uh, here because what that has now become is an order block, right? And we'll mark the lows of it and the opening price. That's exactly where we're stuck at right now. Secondly, the second draw on liquidity would be, for me, failure swings, so it would be here. And I target failure swing here, right? The candle before this took the liquidity to the left of it. So I'd look at 21,510. <clears throat> If we treat this as a break of structure, if we get below the 21.4, 21.3 level, then there's a possibility that we'd, we'd look for retracements around the 50% of this entire move up here. And you can see this is the reason why BTC is stuck where it is right now, right? It's at, <clears throat> it's at equilibrium. So equilibrium would offer it a chance of uh, retracement. So let's just call that a 50%. Uh, this is the reason why we are bouncing off where we are now. It's the 50% of the entire range up. So at 50%, retracements can occur, which is what's happening right now. We'll have to go down to a lower time frame. And on a higher time frame, the once we close or trade below highest closing up candle here right i'd like to say that this is cooked since price went through the highest closing up candle to the left which should give us a market structure shift since this candle here has a very big feg we could either use 50 percent of this candle for market structure shift on the daily or closing or trading through the opening price or the high of the highest closing up candle before the run up. So this would maybe be the highest closing up candle here. This would be the run up. We take the opening or the low of this candle, extend it out in time. You can see we've traded through it there. Let's take 50% of the long daily candle here, which puts us there and we've traded through that as well, right? So technically I'd like to say that sound like the guy basically said you sound smart as fuck, which is true. You just added to something I didn't see when I did analysis. Uh, what was that potato gaming? What was that? Right, so you can see how the uh, slot is still there, right? <clears throat> you can see how the equilibriums of the entire range that we took, so, and I'm using body to body, 
because that is where the bulk of the volume is. So from the top here to the bottom here on the daily, we marked off the 50% that gives us somewhere here. Opening price or the low of the highest up candle before the run up, that puts us somewhere here. We've traded through both of them. And 50%, because this FEG that I've drawn in, in blue here, there's no FEGs above that. Right? There's no FEGs above that anywhere here. So we'd have to use the, if we were treating this as one big um, move up, we'd use the opening or the low of the highest, let's just put the magnet tool on, the highest closing up candle to the left. We've traded through both of them. So I'd like to say that BTC is cooked for now in terms of uh, structure. Just give me a second. Uh, someone needed to drop something off with me at home. Just give me a second. Oh, let's see. Right. Sort that out. Let's get back to it. Right. Like I said, FEG is too big. There's no FEGs above it on a daily that we could use for market structure shift. Um, we would have to go down lower. So we'd use either 50% of this actual FEG for market structure shift or the low of the highest closing up candle. And we've traded through both of them. We're also at 50%, like I said, we're at 50% of this entire range up here. So this is why you would see some sort of retracement happening here. The next question we have to ask ourselves, can we go uh, down a few levels in the range? Let's do this now, right? Largest FEG on this time frame. Um, let's take this into account. This is liquidity grab and not market structure shift or any sort of thing there, right? There's no closing above. Uh, there's no closing above there. So let's just call that trend line liquidity or liquidity grab instead. Uh, there, right? Liquidity grab and price moving away. When that happens on this particular time frame, let's just do this now, right? We'll get rid of this guy and we'll swap him over on a high time frame to this H4 FEG low there. And <clears throat> about a week, week or so, I said we needed to close below this FEG here. Price came back, price came in and touched it here. So this was on. Thursday, the 16th of February price came in here, touched it and then moved away up here. But you can see that you can't get bearish in a situation like that because price is at this point. Let's do that at this point in time when price came back, but did not close through the bottom of the FEG. This was pure retracement to go higher. Closing below the FEG would be a market structure shift based on opposing FEGs being traded through would give us the market structure shift. So if you are looking for short setups in a situation like this, what you would need to do is as FEGs are created on the way up, all of these are being created on the way up. They get balanced and price moves away. As soon as you get a situation where down candles are being traded, up candles are being uh, traded through, and FEGs are being traded through. That is your cue to get out of your positions or at least take partials because there's a possible market structure shift on the way. 
right? We've said that before. So at this point in time, pure retracement, you can see here, price didn't trade through the law of the FEG. All it did was that, tapped it, and then started to move away. So we can come out of this now. And then you can see price went for the high again there. Took the high, then close above it, and then we had all of this. So now at this point, where are we going to be uh, looking here for a market structure shift? Once we get FEGs, any FEGs created on the way up being closed below. So we'd look at this one. There you go. FEG closed below, retracement here, and then price did what it had to do, right? So we had this. And then we closed below here. We retraced here. And price went lower. Took the liquidity here. Probably took some failure swings on the left here and here. Retracement. Back into order block. And then we headed lower. So you can see how the FEG that we used to create the market structure shift also acted as resistance in this uh, in this case. If we went down to an even lower time frame, you would uh, probably see some other imbalance created in here. Ideally, what I would like to use, depending on how big the um, body is or um, the wick, we could use the either the low or the open. You can see there of the order block. So price taps the order block, moves away. Again, what we'd look for is not the actual candle that taps into the liquidity or breaks a low. We look for two things, FEGs being traded through. There's your FEG here. Being closed through. All you needed to do then um, is you fub that. 50% of the range, price is now in premium. This is for you to short. And you can see how the FEG itself again acted as resistance. No closes above the FEGs. You got wicks above, but no closes above. And then price is gone again, right? We don't sell in discount. We don't sell in discount at all. So you'd have to look for at least the 50% of your range being tapped before price moves away. The second thing you can use is the low of the candle that took the liquidity or broke the high being traded through. And we'll come, come back to that just now. If this is the candle that's breaking highs and if the low of that candle gets traded through, that's validating this for me as an order block which means there are orders inside that candle. There's, a, there's orders inside that candle and the opening of that candle becomes sensitive to price. So if we had to take the opening and the low of that candle, draw it out in time. See that? Let's zoom in there. And this is on H4, and I don't, I don't even use an H4, right? Um, I, I, I wouldn't look at an H4 unless you're looking at a little bit of a higher uh, uh, analysis. So the opening and the low of this uh, order block, price was, this candle traded through it with speed of displacement. There's your low and there's your opening price. Price pulled back into the FEG, and then uh, that was it. If we go down to an H1, is there anything you could have done to have refined uh, this? Let's have a look. On H1, your market structure shift would have actually occurred most likely here. Right, you had a displacement candle. This would have also served as an FEG for you to have used on an H1. Price closing below it. Buy side taken, sell side taken, gives us a dealing range from here to here. All we need to do is, like I said, you fib it, you take 50% and you go. 
And then again, you can see how the FEG itself is now acting as resistant. This range was uh, efficient in my opinion. You have, you have this happening here, right? But you had price moving up and then trading all the way through here and then breaking it out with speed. So this here becomes a balanced price range breaking with speed this is where you need to buy or sell in the case right that makes sense lot balance price range breaking with speed the feg can stay open as a breakaway gap or we'd look for it come in tap pay all the orders it needs move away right this would be the this would be the balance price range here This guy. So two things could have happened here. We look for the FEG to get tapped into, completely fold, or it could stay open because it broke with speed. This is a balanced price range. It's efficient in its delivery. Price moved up. All of this movement inside it, even though you, there was a tiny FEG inside here, it's efficient because prices move through all of this uh, more than once. So there's no need for you to think that price needs to come here. There was no need for it to come there because the range itself is balanced and efficient on this move up, all of this before the breakdown. So if you're looking for higher prices before you short, you could have potentially looked at 50% of the balance price range itself. Let's see that, right? You could have looked there. As soon as price moved below here, you, that could have been an opportunity. And if we refined it as we did now, this was the H4, we'd swap it over to H1 there. Let's just do this. H1 order block puts us there and h1 low of the order block puts us there right so balance price range feg is inside here doesn't have to fall that's your feg there there's your order block these two dashed lines price comes back to back to it 50 percent of it orders pairing all the way through here and then price uh, breaks down now you can see here price went back to this order block on the top here mark the low of it take it out in time there's your tap and move so there's here's another situation here right there's an feg open up here here can you guys see it is an FEG open up there. Uh, Mok, what does efficient mean? Efficient means that, how do we put it? Let's tell you what inefficient is first. Inefficient is a move like this. This is inefficient because only one-sided delivery was offered, which was buy side. There was no sell side offered, meaning there were no offers made to any sellers within this range moving upward in order for them to make the range efficient and rebalance the imbalance price would have to move through it like it did here and offer it to sellers because only buyers were offered here which makes this now efficient same story here if you look at the number of times price, let's just worry about this body to body for efficiency. Lowest closing body, highest closing body there. Drag it out in time. It makes this a balanced price range. 
it has an FEG in it, but there's no need for that FEG to be fold because if you look at the number of times price has moved through the range here, it's more than twice, more than three times in fact, any FEGs created in here, there's no need for them to come back and fold that. So there's no need for you to think that at this point here, that price needs to come back here, tag it, and fall. Right, so that stayed open. Efficient range, price moved down, and it came back to order block. Because again, there's no speed until price taps an order block. So you can have all of this move down here. This move here did not tap the order block. It creates or engineers liquidity here. When price moves away, people start to put their stops here. They put their stops here. And then what happens? Especially when you see a move that does not tap the order block before moving away. Price comes back, takes this guy out, takes the liquidity here, taps the order block, and then you get speed. Angelo, this will be uh, on YouTube when I do upload it. Right, again here, price coming back, like we said, tapping the order block, moving down. Now, on a daily time frame, what, what I did mark off with these two lines here earlier, and you can see that price has now tapped it perfectly. Here and here was the low and the opening of a daily OB, or the which we'd call this here. Let's just switch this to a daily so you can see that. The long candle we have going uh, up here. You could have even used this one. But as price comes back, we'd use this as, let's, let's even call it a breaker. Can we find a breaker here? We can. And we'll extend it out in time. Let's just go H1. I'd like for this to to come up to this point, but I don't see a real need for for this to come up to here. It can. I wouldn't mind it. Tap this order block here. Give us market structure shift and start to roll over again. Now, in this case, you can see the order flow is clearly bearish. Don't get caught up with a small move like this just yet so you had all of this happening don't get caught up with a move like this that came above a high here and then start to think that this is now starting to change uh structure no it's not all we the only time we start to worry about um this going from sell model to buy model is you see this feg in here on h1 this guy, we've got the top of it marked as an order block. If price starts to close above it here, then I'm not interested in any shorts. For now, it can tap here, it can wick here, it can do whatever it wants here, as long as it doesn't start to close. If it closes above here, the very next candle should come back down. If it doesn't, you should be out of shorts because price is then looking for um, either to take liquidity here, 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 or even come back into this FEG that was not hit all the way up there. But in order for you to get that, your first step is for price to close above here. So that's so that's a no-no there, right? Price closing above here is a big no-no. Does that make sense? Opposing FEGs getting closed above. They should never do that. <clears throat> if you expect lower pricing, these FEGs should never get closed above. Just as all these FEGs created on the way up were not closed below. Now, there's your two levels of liquidity or the drawn liquidity that we have is 22 and 21.5. So from here, 
if we get market structure shift happening around here at the order block just like we tapped order block here tap order block here it's the candles that broke the low feg left behind this is the only time we can buy in uh, discount doesn't have to go to 50 percent of this entire range here because fair value for uh, selling would be at the low here at the feg created on the break of the low you can sell in here why they are willing there are people in here here to here and here to here this was sell side delivery no buy okay. side offered in order for them to offer it to buyers they run it up here offer it to buyers order pairing begins and if you want to talk uh, breaker block mitigation block uh, concepts people who are long thinking that as price came down here it's now going to start doing that will now start to exit their positions uh, either at break even or at a smaller loss than they would have uh, had they did the same thing down here instead so think order pairing think um, people exiting positions think distribution right so this was we could call a first leg of distribution let's call this a second leg of distribution in here and then we head lower or we could call this the low risk cell and this the first leg of distribution we come down here we come back here second leg and then we head lower market maker cell model uh, concepts so by tomorrow uh, like we said we do expect i do expect a small retrace on indices before heading lower before a slightly deeper retrace so what this can do is from here it doesn't have to go up here from exactly here do something like that engineer liquidity like we did like we did on a move uh here right see this guy didn't tap the order block here so we can assume that this guy doesn't tap this order block creating liquidity as it starts to do that tomorrow stops now get placed above here and then after tomorrow say end of tomorrow tuesday we get this coming up here takes this guy out taps the order block here and then we get speed down there does that make sense which we, which do you think would be a better option for them to do go up here first and then head straight down or engineer liquidity by not going up here to the order block head lower get people to fomo in thinking that price is now headed much lower so people start to fomo in thinking the order block was not hit or the position fair value gap breaker all of that was not tapped we break the low here so now they're thinking lower pricing they start to fomo into the trade here and start to place their stop losses at at highs here and the high here and then suddenly we get a spike up like this and they don't know why the spike happened where it came from and they get stopped out and then we get the speed down does that make sense al dente you're still very quiet and i don't see the mic next to you but slot seems like a reasonable uh, expectation yeah definitely it's the model i've been preaching for quite some time almost a year now you get a move here you have some sort of feg or order block or something here and it doesn't tap right it breaks down here further and then suddenly it comes back and takes it and then it does that 
So this is just liquidity engineering. So we gotta watch out for that happening right here. Because if it does, then I'm not interested in what it does here or FOMOing into this move down here. But as soon as it does this, I can set a limit order, put my stop say somewhere above here and watch it go to Hades. How far it goes down, who knows, who knows. There's a lot of imbalance created on the way up. Ideally, we had this in mind, right? 50% of the equilibrium of the original consolidation on the way up. We'd want to see it tap here first, maybe offer some retracement. I don't think it's going to be an easy situation if it does start going down where you get that retracement happening in here before it does that because if you look very carefully at what's going on in here here it's offering a retracement to the point where it should have retraced to had it broken the low first you'd expect it to do that before that right but it's offering you it's offering that same move beforehand the same level beforehand and then doing that which means and we'll try and find an example of it. If it does this and then breaks down, there's no need for it to come back there. Because it would have made all of this efficient. And let's try and find uh, something to support that case. Which also means as price moves through the 50% that we mentioned here. Right? So this level is 23,457. If you start to break below it, Rejection off of it is your entry to go lower. Now, let's try and find an example because I'm sure I've seen this the other day. Five minutes, 30 minutes. Let's go. Just turn this all of this off. We don't need it. don't need it something like this right let's look at it here picture this being the move up on BTC here with this being the high right and we had this move up you see it there right we came down here and now we're offering retracement around 50 percent of the range if uh, da -da, let's do this there 50 percent 50 percent of the range and then we break down all of that you see that now was there a point that it came back after it did this was there a point that it came back no so I'd actually prefer if it did that then gave us the retracement and we get that but no it gives it before it doesn't come back and then it heads away like I said it's giving it to you beforehand because the chances are once it starts moving away it's not going to come back to give it to you again. What's up, crypto niche? And BTC can be messed up like that. We, we know that all too well. It's also starting to give me vibes uh, of all of this move up here at the highs. Where you got this situation here, right? Same situation. We didn't break a low. We went down here, just like we are going down here at this point. There's the retracement I'm talking about. And what's the chances of this being 50%? It is. It is. Right? It's 50% of the range. It gives it to you, and then it never looks back. 
See what I'm talking about? So if I had to do something like this, it's not about trading uh, patterns either, right? So don't get me wrong. What about trading uh, patterns? So let's see how we can squeeze this enough to prove some sort of point here. If they want to be sneaky, this is what they'll do. You get the idea, right? And when we get to NAS, we'll probably see, because, I mean, I agree, I think we're expecting up first and then bigger, yeah. a bigger happen. drip, or a bigger dip, Not right? happen, especially pay attention to what Geo has been telling, telling us in the Discord and keeping track of all the shit that's going down and the interest rates and all of that. It's not good for risk uh, and it's definitely not good for uh, indices. Yeah. <clears throat> so they'll get themselves out of their positions or reposition themselves for the fall. And they'll leave you and I hanging, waiting for confirmation of a market structure shift too late. And a hope for a 50% retracement because uh, ICT said so. Right? Doesn't happen. Does not happen. We could project some figures based on that. Uh, let's look at about 3.5 to 4.5 standard deviations with eight giving us a sort of terminus there. But we take this entire range. There's your first stop here, 18.8. There's your second, third, and so on. So as far as going back to the COVID lows, is there a, what would you, because our last, uh, our low candle was actually an up candle instead of a down candle, if you look at the daily. Yeah, on COVID lows. Yeah. Even the weekly, right? So, I mean, what would you use as a breaker in terms of, targeting uh exclude like ignoring the wave count right ignoring the wave yeah. count target so purely based on price action so the, oh. the, this is all just experimental stuff that i've been playing with here right yeah and you guys know this stuff trying to okay. figure out whether we can get an extended trading hour session of a court, quarterly candle and i mean you can see COVID lows here fill the void or this distorted price here that was left behind here perfectly right and moved away now around the COVID lows itself there's a void and that top of that void is six nine eight three thirty one right listening and i'm not sure i'm not sure if you have poison can you pin this chart in the I will. Bitcoin I will. channel yeah i will right Let's say six nine eight three thirty one, right? And I'm six nine eight three thirty one. That's the low. Let's go back to our other chart where we started off the stream doing BTC. We had the area marked off first of all for some reason. I can't remember why now. But let's try and do this quickly. Again top of what we calling wave one to the bottom of wave three projected from what we are saying is wave four hundred percent extension puts us about six six triple four so it's there in the zone it's there or there are less more or less there let's go back to this guy and these are all experimental things they possibly probably don't mean something else but from what I've seen them do so far, they work, right? Now, 
this entire this entire block here for me would be an order block I'd look at the top of this candle to the bottom of here whatever happened here and pull it out, pull it out there even here right and we'll pull it out in time and that would be where we are targeting there see that okay yeah and i think that's what i was trying to get at i think you know potential order block there fits with the wave count too yeah. which provides some confluence yeah. so that's what we would be looking for in terms of uh all of this here you can see that using this theory we have we only just stepped out of this area on the 11th which makes and the, let's just zoom into this why did we bounce where we bounced take take this order block into consideration here look at the price action here i'm going to zoom in there because it's overlapping the bottom of this wick is because it doesn't remember anything that happened in here all of this price action that i'm highlighting now right watch it disappear there appear there it doesn't remember any highs or anything put in there it remembers this remembers this guy right and if we take that guy out in time you see that breaker tap and move now this opened up in blank space but it leaves a gap here to about 16.7 as the opening and this here as the opening here close here so it gives us all of this as potential potential retracement if we treated all of this as distorted price action so on a quarterly cycle we had the accumulation phase we have all the manipulation that happened in here and now we're looking for the distribution until we can prove otherwise that this is more bullish than we uh, expected it to be and that would be or, or mean closing above opposing FEGs on the daily but now the daily should hold price back if it's bearish meaning I don't expect price to close above on a daily basis this FEG here from this candle created yesterday to this created on Thursday this FEG should hold price which means on a low time frame we can wick above on the daily time frame we shouldn't be closing above here if we do the very next candle should come back and uh, head much lower so tomorrow most likely what we will see is price start to head lower and then we'll get that guy coming up here before it goes down right yeah my expectation was that we were going to fill that lower time frame of fg right there right above the yeah your, your dashed line right above the ob like you said but again i guess yeah we got to look at the daily close to make sure it doesn't stay up yeah there though so let's head over to nas right i was long here i was actually long here 30 minutes let's go 15 minutes Played a lot of NAS uh, lately. Played a lot of NAS. I think I was long here, closed here. Sorry, a lie. This was the Thursday high, right? So here I used this high as inducement, shorted here. And you can see how simple this becomes 
uh, now, right? On NAS, for example. Let me turn this guy off or remove him from my life there. And let's use a five minute because 15 is. My eyes are not trained enough for a 15 anymore. The ideas become um, simple enough when all we need to do is, and this is the, this is the idea, right? Buy side taken, sell side taken, dealing range, fob the range, 50%. There, you're looking to enter. Any PD arrays? Yep. Or the block. That's it. That's all that it is. Projections. You could use body to body of the entire range here. And look for three and a half. Yep. Easy. Did you get any more? You got about four and a half. I think you got about five out of this. Let's just add one more here minus five yep you got five standard deviations out of that entire move this was a bit of a distorted price and i think this was news in here I think we shorted here, longed here. My last uh, shorted here. Shorted here based on, you see the spike up here? I think I took 50% of this range moving up here. Yeah, that was it. 50% of the range there, which gave us, so if we treated this entire move as a range, and consolidation seeks equilibrium right there's equilibrium short there stop above there bob's your uncle right short of that one shorted there now this one was a bit trickier because, and it's something that my mentor, uh, the currency merchant mentioned, in fact, you should watch his last uh, stream, right? Or last YouTube video. You get a situation where you're going to have valid setups that fail. And I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. And he mentions something similar in, in, in his video. So you had a situation here where we took sell side out, right? Price is moving upward. You agree? Sell side taken and then buy side taken. So what would that, what, ordinarily, what would you think this is? A bullish dealing range, right? 50%. You go along here, you put your stops below here first, then maybe you move it up here, expecting that. And then suddenly it just rolls over there. It's because, like you said, you're gonna get valid setups that are going to fail. It's not because your model is inconsistent or wrong. In this situation, like he says, order flow is king. Order flow is bearish, but you are looking for longs. You're going against what the order flow is. So these, this, this situation can happen. My last short, or my latest one, was actually, show it to you now, it was right here. Let me see if I can get that. So we take 50% of the range. Put him up here. Or was it here? Yeah, I think it's here. 50% of this range moving up, 
and I shorted right here. Let me see if I can find it. Just give me a second. Copy image. Nope. Yeah. Now, I think we had some PCE something something on. Uh, yeah, this was it, right? 12187-ish. Was that it? Yeah, right there. Right there where I had it marked. That's the other problem is, like, it seems like almost every day now we're getting news. Yeah, it's, it's, it's shit. It's really shit. I mean, it's shit... If you don't know what's happening, you can get caught up, and not every not everyone should be trading news, right? Like right. twelve one eight seven. I got in here, and I only got in here. I think it was maybe because of Asia. No, not Asia. Yeah, it was Asia, right? Was I trading before your Thursday? Yeah, it was the day before. We had a spike up here to 4, 4 p.m. or something. Right. It presented itself, but the at this point, the draw was always going to be lower on the daily, uh, on the daily, right? So on the daily, once we close below this FEG, and you can see how this is starting to look like BTC. If you picture this, long candle being BTC's FEG, right? We closed above it here. As soon as we did that, it was cooked. That was the cook. Close below here, retracements. Now, this retracement here, let's get rid of the FEG, went to where and why. Take this order block, extend it out in time. There you go. Drop to a 15 or 30 minute. And this was the short or second short yeah there right daily order block uh, I was long in here down here and what happened after New York you had this long spike up here but I didn't know where I wanted the draw to be I actually wanted the draw to be honest with you to come back for this guy here these equal highs here so I'll tell you what happened there I'll be honest with you guys I'll tell you exactly what happened there so <clears throat> I'm long down here based on um, a zoom right OLR push retrace I'm long here New York closes at 4 in Asia or ex Asia, extended trading hours we get a long spike up I leave it overnight morning wakes up we get a quick run of the liquidity and then we start to push higher so I'm happy, I'm good, everything's going good. Then I'm starting to think, remember I'm looking for my draw to be up here now, right? Equal highs. Not knowing that this daily order block is in play because I haven't seen it at the time. We take sell side and then we take buy side and I fall into the trap of this being a dealing range. And now I'm looking for this to come here to retrace so I can get this. And then it straight up nukes through here. So I enter here a second position with my stop below here. At this point, I'm 20k up. At this point, I'm 3k down. And from 20k, I'm now back at 5k. And 
and then I end up closing at about three. Don't want my stop to get taken off because now I've moved it to break even around here where I longed. I get taken out and then it shoots back up. It's a shit thing. So draw being lower, I say no problem. That's I'm still bearish. This is this is a gift here. This retracement, right? Coming back here. Coming back here. We take 50% of this move up. The stock could have been above there. I'm not looking for it to go higher than this. It breaks down. It retraces 50%, and then the rest is history. Now you don't, like I said, you don't want to be short before the news because, look here, I'll, I'll tell you what happened to a friend of mine uh, at exactly this. Let's go on to a five minute. I'm already short, so I'm happy, and you got this shitty price action going on here. So I'm short here, and then you get the whole morning through Asia and London. This shit is happening to New York. Right, two things are going to happen there. News is going to come. This is all engineered liquidity. That's going to happen. Maybe take me out and head down. But things haven't been looking good the past few days, right, in terms of rates. So my friend comes to me and he phones me and he says, look, yeah, I'm long. So I say, why? He tells me, south side taken buy side taken here's my dealing range i'm pulling a fub and i'm going long at the 50. but remember now he's going against order flow right order flow is down not to show what the intention of this is because i'm i'm already short so he takes a long care and then things start to meander a bit right and then it heads lower comes up here he gets out of his long just in time because if he's his stop was below here look what happens at 8 30 when the news opens huge ass gap it would have went straight through his stop and look how far it fell that's an instant account liquidation right there So, like I said, you're going to have valid setups that are going to fail because order flow is king. Don't take them. Especially if news. Look at this. This would never have hit your stop. This would have went straight through your stop and missed everything completely. Yeah, I was long. Uh, you remember, I, I longed Tesla. At yeah like 190 83 yeah i was up i was up around like 18k yeah and i ended up closing my position the next day up around 800 dollars maybe yeah because there was no reason for it to return to entry so actually when it got back to like 197 something i just closed it because like this is not it shouldn't have done this it yep. should have just kept going up should never have done taken that. out 205 and maybe then retraced it should never have done that so and now I'm thinking, why does all of this look all so familiar? Why does it look all so familiar? Because they fucked around with us like this before. They fucked around with us like this before. Right? That cr that's crazy, huh? Yeah. yeah. So now I'm thinking... And it's been doing what it's doing, right? And it's been making me money as much as I hate uh, trading patterns, but hear me out a bit. Let's switch this down where we can see it on. Uh... Yeah, I've got about 10 minutes left on this. Let's just do this really quickly, right? Maybe tomorrow we can do uh, another another stream just to catch up on the rest. But hear me out here. Is this on 15 minute? There we go. Hear me out here. My draw on liquidity is going to be back into the breaker here for NAS. There's the breaker. I don't want to see price going above this breaker, or closing above the breaker, but I do want to see NAS close the gap of the new scandal, right? 
that's what I want to see. So this is the retracement I'm looking for tomorrow. Tomorrow into Tuesday or so, most likely tomorrow. I was long down here, but I didn't get what I wanted to see on, uh, let's go down to a five, three minute. That's the, that's that 1258 level we had talked about, 12, right? 12058, correct. That's it, right? And it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's more, more so that because it's the bottom of this order block uh, that we marked off here. Because if you go back and you test there, right, 12061, this one. That's what we're looking for. 1205, was it this? It was 12058, right? 1205810. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It was on a three minute, I think it was an order block on a three minute, but you get the idea. That's the level. And I'm long down here now based on this. We've already gone down a lot. Let me take this away from a five minute, then we don't have to worry about it on a five. There we go. Nope, nice. There. Right, we've already gone down a lot. And where have we come to? Let's just switch to the daily really quickly again. We've come to a previous fair value gap here to here, right? A daily fair value gap. This gap here, right? Extend it out in time. That's where we went to. We've gone through it. It held a support. It was a draw on liquidity. Um, and that's where we were at the end of, of that news run uh, down. So now I'm looking to get back up to this 12.058, 12.061 level, but NAS, NAS just doesn't want me to be uh, great, right? So we come here, we get an OLR here, right? And then the candle that breaks the low gets traded through. Let's do this. The candle that breaks the low, this guy, gets traded through. So it's time to long. There's a fair value gap inside here on the M3, I think. M3? I think it's M3. It's M3, right? And there's your order block here, not tapped at this point. So price comes back in here, taps the order block. Here, perfectly. In the fair value gap. So we expect the retracement because there was your market structure shift here. You, you agree? Fair value gap, price closing above it, order blocks created before market structure shift are likely to be raided. There you go. And price moves away. But at the end of Friday, we get too much of this. And I actually ended up closing here and my wife telling me not to. And then suddenly it spikes back up here. I take a small long in here and I close it up here. So I'm up a bit, but I'm in no position at the moment. I'll wait for what London or Asia gives me in the morning. But again, clear, we're looking for the draw to be up here at 12.061. Yeah, maybe we fill that, that up candle overnight and then yeah whatever it move is, right? up during new york and then the bigger draw for us is about 11.8 11.7 so from there we're looking to head down through for the week that's the idea because if you look on the daily level price is bearish And I think this is a weekly, let's have a look here, weekly, yeah, Fro's fault, uh, RB, my wife's fault. I think this is weekly auto block in here, weekly fair value gap, right? There. And there. So we're looking for price to come in there. We don't need to use the weekly. We could use a daily. There's 50% of this shitty wick over here. There's a daily 
fair value gap that was traded through. We could use that as a level the same way we used this as a level. There's 50% of that wick. So we're looking for the draw to be lower. And from 11.6, 11.7, we see whether it wants to come, whether it wants to head down lower or, or show a willingness to take out whatever liquidity was engineered here like that before rolling over again. So that's what we'd be looking for. But ideally, I think that NAS may be cooked for now and we are actually going to be doing this right once we break through this guy then it's go time right we broke through the failure swing it can do this we don't mind it but if it decides to do like i said come down here and then go up here first then chances are it's going to go straight through there but if it goes the other way around and goes straight down here and then gives us this we'll take that too because we'll get that next either or either or all we need to be um, cognizant of is 50% of this range and would you look at that where is that in the weekly order block weekly fair value gap consequent encroachment of the daily wick that we just marked off and we'll put a line in there that's 50% so at the 50% we can expect some sort of reaction or retracement right so that lines up so now we on the daily we're looking for a draw lower and that's where we'd go to 11650 that's what we're looking for on NAS so we don't want the breaker high to be closed above which puts us at the extreme end of 12058 or the gap created at the news candle because you can see there's wicks and I, I mentioned to you specifically the other day look at this here right the high of this candle was 1205310 the low of this candle 1205190 which means that this candle went just above the low of that candle technically it's balanced but we can see that it's not not with not with volume right it's with price but not with volume so this would be a volume imbalance in here and we'd want a candle on the 30 minute to come at least rebalance it out tomorrow and then um head lower into the week 12 650. is that someone speaking there right so which also means btc could may or may not give us something like this as long as we don't get closes above here we could be going down there like we said come up here give us the tap and then we head down to 1260 following week not sure what happens in the following week we get some retracement happening right like i said it's giving you that retracement massive retracement well not massive this is about this would be about 650 it would be about six six hundred dollar six hundred dollar move come in and full take liquidity and full whatever imbalances were created in this area here and then lights out again right i'm not looking for nas to make any new highs after that until we can start closing above uh, bigger daily candles and then that's it we short and we leave do you got time to look at nat gas yeah for me? we can quickly right Let's have a look, and then I think Maybe like uh, the four hour Abzal, or... Abzal wanted uh, Sol. I think Sol. Let's look at Forex, and we're looking at Natgas. The Widowmaker, that's what they call it.
Right, FEG has been closed above. You can see that. We've taken liquidity here. Now, I want to see what happens. Although we had this FEG being closed above here, right? I'm more interested in this guy being closed above. I want to see how this opens up later today. It could either, if it's a wick, if it's a, not a wick, if it's a gap up, then we could look for retracement to go along because this could be offering retracement before it heads lower. But if it's a gap down, then you know we're headed all the way down here, back here, right? We're headed all the way down here. Because nat gas could, you see the low here, broken here? It could maybe want to go back here and retest here, right? Retest the lows. And then give us that. Yeah, that's what I that's what I drew and send to you. That was my leading kind of idea. Because yeah. we've got a so Nat Gas's chart looks extremely similar to Lumber's. Um, Lumber had a similar kind of setup. It yeah. retraced from a similar FEG, went up to the golden pocket of the entire range, yep. and then rejected there, made one more new low before it did like a three or four hundred percent move. And so, and here's what I just was, based yeah. on again, just based on the patterns, if Nat Gas does the same thing, it's going to bounce from somewhere around here, go to three fifty to four. Then yep. come back down to the 160. I think we had 164 marked out as our level. Yep. And then from there, it's going to do a much bigger move up you, to that. If you remember um, what I was, I, I just told right. you, right? Look at that. Now, look at this straight shot down only because we had this kind of shit happening here. The retracement in here was sufficient enough to carry the whole move down. Let's just check something out here to be cheeky, right? And we'll do it on a daily. Let's take 50% of this range here. Body to body. Let's take away the lowest cell. And how's that? That's all you needed to do and walk away. Right there. Take that out. That's all see that that's all that needed to be done fifty percent of that range up you sell and you walk away same story here three wave up we take from the bottom here slot you still there to the top here. We look yeah, I'm here. Percent, and we look to sell it and walk away. Look at this one. It went to 762. This was about 728. But look at that. Seventy two percent. Right, yeah, but you know the plan. You can scalp it up. You can scalp it up. Just chat to Geo and just ask him what's what's happening with uh, energy. But I'm only interested, like I said, if we close above this FEG here and if it's not a gap down, if it's a gap up would be better. A gap down I don't trust it. Um and we could look to play something like that. You can look at that. CRV, CRV. They all look like they're in these flat, flat corrections, right? One, two, three, four, five. They all look like A, B, C, Y, all of them. 
shit shows. What's the other one? Sol. Let's have a look. I think BNB may be in trouble next. Just wasn't looking too good the last time I had a look at it. Yeah, so we already know where we wanted it to be down here, 1246. It's at a breaker. Interesting that it fails here or looking to fail here. Liquidity taken. Let's go down to a four hour. Market structure shift ideas. Yep. Market structure shift. All the bad things. So if you were bearish, then you won't want it to close above here. You'd start to think about selling, selling Sol here. And if it closes above here, it's a bit more bullish because you're closing above an opposing FEG, which is also the breaker. So wicks above here, allowed. Closing, not allowed. You could uh, position yourself short here, I suppose. Eyes are failing me, yeah. And then you have Does it want to go for it though? Order block. Right up, Zell. That's it. XMR. I don't know. Is, is XMR even a thing, uh, TD? After Fluffy Pony's issues, legal issues. Not too sure. XMR looks like it never came out of the. Uh, it looks like it never came out of the downtrend, right? Let's have a look. Look at these wicks. Madness. Let's start off at a daily. So I can already see. So this was SMT with probably Ethereum or BTC. Lower high there. Market structure shift there. Let's have a look at this. 50% not quite tagged is a balanced price range. I wonder if they want to run this up at some point to tag this 50% as exit liquidity. Just make a note of this 173. I doubt it, but it's possible. 173. Watch that level there because maybe this is inducement here and they run it up here and then they roll over there. That'll be your cue to get the F out of, out of uh, XMR. Looks like shit. <sighs> One or two more guys and then I'm out. You know, I haven't even been looking at S&P. Been so caught up in NAS that I haven't even been looking at S&P. Well, interesting that that level that we marked off on NAS, it's already it's already hit on um, S&P. So the next draw would be lower and then eventually down here, uh, sloth where we wanted it to all the all the when did we draw this january yeah 3860 we've been waiting for for weeks now so yeah it's coming it's coming mm -hmm. all right remember consequent encroachment of the daily candle that i marked out on nas not hit but on smp it is hit so Small retracement this week and then we head down lower. 
once SMP SMP has a, a lot lower to go first or a lot more structure to break so this would be the the line in the sand or the depth of um, SMP 500 dealing range right but remember now order flow is bearish since last year retracement death but it all depends on whether they want to give us that retracement here first come in and fill in something here then we don't get this all we do is we just get that let's have a look at something here quickly <coughs> and we're at the 50 percent <coughs> at the 50 percent of this so interesting to see tomorrow what happens Remember, rejecting underneath the 50% um, and it's a goner. Thanks for the gifts, Bear. I don't know what they mean, but uh, they look like fun. TikTok, ice creams and cones. Yeah, what else? Eat, we haven't even touched eat. A contracting shitty price price action here and it's not let's go h4 yep again uh, on the h4 it was cooked oh. here market structure shift all the good things it's and we don't want ETH to be closing above here if we are bearish. All right, so let's do this and do that. We can wick above there, but no closes above. And this could possibly be uh, the distribution leg happening in here. I can spell it correctly. Distribution. There we go. It's actually held up pretty well uh, as opposed to BTC, but you can see that it hasn't gone for what BTC has gone for similarly. So BTC went for for this guy, BTC went for this guy and for this guy. It, nope. So you can sort of see, <clears throat> if you picture it now, a sloth, it did this. Well, BTC did that. Look at it. BTC yeah, it's like that. its own its own version of SMT divergence. Yep, it's SMT with ETH. So that's divergence with ETH. At the highs, the weaker one would then be ETH. Yep. I mean, which makes sense, right? So in bull markets, alts outperform, and bear markets, out, alts shit the bed even harder. So. Yep. yep. That's it. If LTC is pumping, and then then you definitely know it's over. And LTC pump before everything. LTC pump. LTC is pumping right now breaking structure and doing all sorts of weird things look on the h4 here right closed above here ltc has been going up when the rest of them have been going down can we end it off by putting in this here it's usdt crop finance new pain Right. 
very similar. Except LTC is breaking structure and the rest of them aren't. Right? So even if LTC gets up here, I haven't tested it out, even if LTC gets up here, but BTC is here. That's SMT of some sort with LTC. What happens if we take this guy out and we load eat? I'm not too sure if anyone has tested any SMT on no oh shit. Tested any SMT out on ETH. Yeah, so maybe we get SMT with ETH. Not too sure. But what would be interesting is if they do this. If they do this, then they're playing games with us, right? Watch. Um, There. This being liquidity, an inducement, and we tap the order block. So I won't long it if it does do some shit like this, right? Say it closes above the H4, like um, LTC is done. Then we know it's headed for a higher objective. This would be the higher objective here, 1694. You short the shit and you leave it. Because engineered liquidity, lower, the stops above here, people have been FOMOing in here. We go here, we tap the order block, and we fall. Done. So now we've got an objective if it does pump higher. Time it with BTC and send them both to hell. Right, that's it, boys. Maybe tomorrow we uh, we can check on a few uh, other things. I don't see possibility that BTC may do the same. Possible. It would be the. Yeah, it doesn't have to. But it po could possibly uh, 24.2, but we'll have a look at it. I just don't like when BTC does things like like this because this all becomes engineered liquidity here. You agree? All trendline liquidity waiting to be taken. If that's the case, I'd look at a possible order block tap here. Twenty four point two. If it wants to do that, if it starts to close above here on the daily, there, and then we'll look look at death afterwards, or fifty percent of this range of the BPR. Puts us there about 24.4 right so boys you know what to do you can see it's pumping now if it goes up there that's the short so today that will be the push up on NAS which looks like it's gonna coincide with uh, BTC and if we get that 24.2 to 24.4 that's the uh, short to take Is that in order, gentlemen? 24.2, 24.4, eyes on that today. Because they're giving us, they're giving us gifts most likely. Can you see it? Engineered liquidity gets taken out. So we take <coughs> the guys out and then we drop lower. Nice, I like that idea.
especially since order flow is bullish i'm not buying into a bullish model here i'll buy them taking this out changing shifting structure here giving us an entry to do that so that's going to be tomorrow all right we'll upload this to youtube and then we can uh, check on in it check on it later Thanks, boss. Get some rest, man. Yep. Cheers. Will do. Thank you. No problem. Hey, finally. Finally. Right at the yes, end. Yes, I'm, <laughs> I'm just hearing. I'm learning. <laughs> when I have no idea, is. I shut my mouth. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> I'll see you later. Bye. Bye.